Bell, the Keystone Stitcher. I'm glad you're here with me today. So today is September 1st, 2022. Summer's over, kids are back in school, and I can't believe we're in the last few months of the year already. So, shall we get started? Oh, before we get started, I'm filming in the same, recording in the same spot that I usually do, but this past month I made a few changes. So I've painted the wall, and as you can see here, I have wainscot. So the lower half of my wall is white, always has been. But now I only have one picture on the wall. This is Stevie Ray. The original artwork was done by Wendy Kathleen, and this is charted by Heaven Earth Designs. You can still find it there. As for what used to be on the wall, I have it sitting over here next to me, and I'm going to show you each one up close and tell you who the designer was and if you can still get it or or not. So let's get started on my progress for the month. So I have four projects that I worked on this month. The first one is my focus piece for the year and this is Alice in Snow White and I'll put a picture up here. I'm gonna have to move things around because I, I want to show off my wall. Anyway, the original art is done by Jasmine Becca Griffith and charted by Heaven Earth Designs. I'm stitching this on a 16 count Platinum Ada uh, only because it was the only thing available at the time. So let me show you the very top. Okay, so this, I started over here with Alice and then I moved over to Snow White. Let's see. And so you see I did her face, and then last time you saw it, I was working on those apples, and now I have most of her lap done, her arm is done, I did more of the deer, brought him down, filled in that background, and I am at 44%. My goal for this year is to reach 68% which will be just over two thirds. And so let's see if I can bring this back enough. Not quite. So let me put in where this was last time you saw it. And so you can see I did quite a bit. 6% works out to roughly just, well I did 6.5% this month, but it works out the 6% to just over 13,000 stitches. So I did that. Let me change my board here quickly because the next one got more progress than I anticipated. And the next one is Mini Dia de Mortos. The artwork is by Alexandra V. Bach. And this also is a Heaven Earth design. So this one is a gift for my granddaughter, my oldest granddaughter. And so let's see if I can, there we go. So I'm gonna move this back and put in where this was last time. Cover up my face here. So in June, the last time I worked on this, I had come down and did her face. But I had a lot of missing stitches. Let me see if I can look around here. In the top. So up around here in these flowers, I had a ton of missing stitches. And I filled all that in, and then I came across and I did everything there. So now the entire top row of pages is done. And look at her face. Pretty cool, isn't it? So I am now, now I put in way more than I anticipated. So I put it, let me see if I can read my own writing here. I put in an additional 20.15%, so I'm at 45.15%. And I started at 22,000, just to show you how obsessed I became with this. When I started this, I had 22,000 stitches, and I'm now at just under 40,000. So yeah, 18,000 stitches went in this. So this is really cool. I'm thinking if I continue to stay as obsessed with this as I am, this might be a finish before the end of the year. That would be amazing. I didn't think I could do that. So 
that got most of my time. I didn't want to put that down for anything, but I have a gift that I need to do, and so I needed to move that on. So this is, I need to put that down and move on to this. So this is Harry Potter characters, and this is what that will look like. And this is by, oh man, um, Daily Magic Stitch, I think. If I'm wrong, I'll put it on the screen here. And I had done Ron. Let's see if I can, there we go. I did Ron uh, last month, June. I did it in June, I think. And now I did Luna. And there's a few changes to each, but for Luna, okay, her hair, this is one of those designs that uh, is, I believe it's a Ukrainian designer, but you know how they have all the background? So this has single strands of background and double strands of background, and it also, background, back stitching, and it also has um, fractionals. So when you're doing the back stitching, you have to pierce things. And that doesn't work for me working on Ada. So I did the top of her hair. I did all the back stitching that you're supposed to. And I didn't really like how some of it was coming out. So on the bottom part of her hair, so from the shoulder down, I did the two strands, but I didn't do the single strands. The writing on the book was supposed to be much smaller. You could barely see it. And it, it you needed to uh, pierce the threads because they were fractionals. And I didn't want to do that. So it doesn't have the entire title, but it has enough of the title. My granddaughter will know what this is. This is for my youngest granddaughter. The triangle, what is that? The always symbol, the little triangle. That was on the bottom of her book. And it was so tiny and the de there was so much detail in it that you couldn't read it. So I just left that off. And then there was some white back stitching around the collar on the book and down here on the lower part of her sweater. And I don't like white back stitching, so I left that off. But that is where that is. And then my needle almost fell out. And then I came down here and I put in the bottom and a little bit of the shoe of Hermione so that I know where I need to start next month or this month. I don't even know what month I'm in. So that took, these seem to take a lot longer to do. I don't know if it's just because I'm not, this isn't my type of stitching. I, I don't like things with a lot of back stitch, especially when the back stitch is piercing threads and, and, uh, doesn't follow along. I, I like to, you know, from one block to the next. And this doesn't do that. So you're constantly angling it to, to smooth out the, the corners of things. So that seems to take me a much longer time to do. So I gave myself four days. I ended up getting it done and I had some time that I could work on something else. And what I really wanted to do is go back to my full coverage. So I decided that up until this point, everything I'd worked on was a gift. And I didn't work on anything this month for myself. I thought about, um, I thought about restarting Peacock Daisy. I had one of you guys, one of you reached out to me privately and gave me some suggestions so I didn't have to restart it. In the end, I decided to restart it. I did buy the new fabric for it. But yesterday, I just wasn't feeling a new start. So I pulled out, you can leave your hat on. This is, the art is, is by Sandra Santara, and this is a Heaven Earth design. And so I'm gonna pull back here and show you where it was. So up at the top there, I'll put the before. Now, I, I wasn't sure when I had a, a picture. And so I, I took a picture of this yesterday after I put in the hoop. So I only worked on this half over here. So let me fold it up and bring this in closer to you. So I worked on filling in that page and I would have done that except I thought this was the bottom and it wasn't. I was one 
row block short so that added an additional 400 stitches and I just couldn't get that many stitches done in one day. But I came really close. So there's a couple stitches in here missing. So I think there's four, five, six, and then just what's down here. And then that last page will be done. So, and again, this is the entire piece. I love how rich those colors are. Let me look around here and see what, okay. Yeah, you can see the whole thing. I love the richness of the reds and the blues. And so this is only two and a half pages wide. So this page is almost done. There's maybe 50, 60 ninja stitches that need to be done. And this page, of course, has just a few. And then all I have to do is this middle one. And then the top row will be done. So that was a lot of fun. I was really happy to pull that back out. So before we get into plan, well, before we get into plans, I've got haul. And I don't have a lot of haul, but I thought I would mention what I did get. So as I mentioned, I purchased a piece of fabric to replace and restart Peacock Daisy. I'm not sure when I'm going to restart that. I'm just not in the mood to start things right now. I also picked up two other pieces of fabric so I could start my day and night fairies should I want to start it next year. And I know you're going next year, why would you buy it now? Well, here's a little public service announcement just in case. There are a lot of stories coming out about an energy crisis, especially in Europe. And if that's so, I'm already hearing certain factories are closing. They're not able to stay open. And the place I like to get my fabric from is Weigart. Now, of course, I buy it here in the States, but it comes from Germany. And if they decide they need to close down their factory for a while because they don't have enough energy to keep the factory open and running, I want to know that if I get an itch to start something, I have the fabric. And so I thought about it, what would I want to start? And the answer was day and night fairy. So I bought that. I also bought a, par a chart, and this is from Unconventional X Stitch. The artist is, um, oh, her last name is Payne. I'm drawing a blank. I'll put it here on the screen. This is charted by Unconventional X Stitch or Cross Stitch. And I, I just, I've wanted this for a long time. I think when I look at this, I want to be her. I want to be that comfortable in my own skin. And not that I'm not, but there's just something about her. She, the, the title is Strength, but what I really see is Confidence. So I've been kind of bargaining with myself. If I get everything done and I have a couple days, I'll allow myself to start this and then I'm not in the mood to start anything. So I've decided that if I reach all my goals in December, that I will start this for my birthday, which my birthday falls right between Christmas and New Year's. So those were my purchases, nothing exciting. Now, let me move on to what used to be on the wall before we get into plans. And I will tell you, for the most part, if you can still purchase this. So the first one, I showed you this a few months ago when I reframed it, is Rainbow Row. It's a nice long piece. And I was given, I've got a lot, of, let me see if I... Okay, I don't pay for um, special no glare glass, so it's a little glary. So this is a design by Barbara and Cheryl. Um, you can still get this. I, I found it in two places. It's on everything cross stitch and it's on one, two, three stitch. One um, is a little bit different than the other one. And so you want, if you want this look, you want the one by Barbara and Cheryl. And I believe that one of the designers has passed away. And so the other one has republished and, uh, you know, they're, it's a little bit different. So if you want that exact one, you want to get the one that says Barbara and Cheryl. Okay, this next one, I can't tell you much of anything about it. 
So let me give you a little background. So a friend of mine contacted me and asked if I would be willing to stitch her a piece because her eyesight is really bad. And I said, of course. So she had seen the stitch by another friend. So she sent me the, the design. It was an orig originally it was a kit. It was by a company I didn't recognize. And I stitched it exactly as it called for. Now I had to convert the threads because they weren't by DMC. And it was really hard because, like I said, the company was out of business. So um, I finally found a decent conversion and I stitched it exactly as it was supposed to be for her on 14 count. But as I was stitching it, I kept thinking I would change this and I would change that. And so I did. I stitched it again for myself and I put on 18 count. And let's see. Yeah, right there. So the changes that I made, the house was done in creams and the roof was just basically outlined. And I kept thinking, if that were me living out in the country, I would want to live in a converted barn. So I did the building as red and I did the roof black. There were geese along the bottom here, walking along the pathway, and I didn't want geese on mine. So I just filled it in and kind of freehanded a little bit more of the pathway. And then the, let me see here, yeah. The quilts, I decided that I wanted them to look, well, I'm talking, I wanted them to look as if they'd been well used. And at the same time, you were being hung outside to dry. So I wanted the sun, the effect of the sun coming through the trees. And so I used, let's see if I can get this a little closer. I used some over dyes and variegated floss. And so I stayed with basically the, the same color scheme, I just changed it up for my purposes. Okay, this next one is In the Pines, and this is by Scarlet House. Now, I took this one out of the frame because I think I might turn this into a project bag. So, as far as project bags go, let me show you here. I use these bags that I bought on Amazon, but they're now available on uh, one, two, three stitch. And then I picked up these little craft tags and I use my friction pads so that I can erase and relabel them. But my giant, like, like Alice in Snow White, doesn't fit in these little bags. So I'm thinking for a couple of those giant ones that I would turn this into a project bag instead of having this on the wall. But this, like I said, is in the pines by Scarlet House. And this next one you probably all know. This is a Blackbird design. And this comes from um, Sweet Land of Liberty. And I think this one would make a nice project bag as well. Okay. This next one, if you've been following me, you know that I just finished this at the end of last year. And this is called Dragonfly 2. And it's a free design on cyberstitchers.com. And that it was designed in all black and just a monochrome piece. And so I played around with some over dyes that I'm not really used to using. Um, I've played with them, like I said, in that one and in this, but yeah, I don't do it very often. And so that's that one. This next one, I need to restretch it. But this next one is an Etsy design. It's called The Man in Black and the Gunslinger. It's by Snarky Art Company. And there we go. You can see it's wrinkled, so I need to restretch that. And I'm a huge Stephen King fan. So this is from uh, based on the Gunslinger series that he did. Uh, the quote here is the very first sentence of the first book of the series. So I saw somebody else stitching this. If I can remember who, I'll put it on the screen. This next one, I can't tell you too much. I don't know if you can still get it. You might have to look and get it on the secondhand market. I believe this was the cover image. This came from a Just Cross Stitch magazine at least a dozen years ago, long before I wrote down titles and, and artists. But I wanna say this was on the cover and that's what caught my attention and I purchased the magazine. And I grew up along one of the Great Lakes. I grew up along Lake Erie. 
and we always spent time out on the water. And I was in love with houseboats. And while this isn't a houseboat per se, it made me think of the houseboats of my childhood. And finally, the last one that was on the wall, this is Tribal Owl by White Willow Designs. And again, this was a monochrome piece. And I, I think it was a monochrome. But I ended up just picking whatever colors. And that's that one. So I think that might still be available, but you can check White Willow. Okay, so that was everything that used to be on the wall behind me. <laughs> so what am I going to work on next month? What are my plans? Well, not very exciting. It's going to be a lot of the same. Um, I'm going to work on Alice in Snow White and put another 6% in, which when I reach my 6%, I will have reached 50%. Exactly. So I'm really, really excited by that. Um, oh, a couple of things here. Oh, I will put that in. And the other one that I will be working on definitely is my Harry Potter kids. And I'm going to be putting Hermione in. And this is what Hermione looks like. I still have the urge to work on um, Dia de Mortos. I, 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 I don't know. I'm just, I had a really hard time getting into that one. And then once I did this month, it was just, I didn't want to put it down. So I still want to work on it. So I'm going to allow myself to pick that up. And from there, we'll see. I know that today and tomorrow, well, today's Thursday, I got a lot going on. And so I won't have a lot of stitching time. So because I didn't finish this page, and because there's still ninja stitches over here, I'm going to work on this for the next three days, so through Saturday. And like I say, I won't be home most of tomorrow. So yeah, that we'll see where we get on that one. Other than that, it, it's going to be some of the same. And then whatever time I have left, or if I get tired of working on Dia de Mortos, I'll pick something else up. What I'm going to pick up, I'm not sure. I would like to mention that... Um, Kelly from Animal Instinct. And I bring this up because of the Harry Potter kids. When working on the Harry Potter kids, the pattern works in Pattern Keeper. Now, buying it, it comes with both the PDF and a Saga version. So if you... Saga? Yeah, I think it's Saga. So if you have the Saga, you can work it in that. But when you work it in Pattern Keeper, the back stitch doesn't work. And when you have... You will have... Um, like two strands of something, but only in a half stitch, and then you'll have a full stitch. And so I used to keep, and I can't show you because I'm recording on my phone, but I used to keep on my phone the list of the symbols and that I can refer to. I leave it open, I take a picture or whatever, and leave it there. And then when I change colors, I just glance and see if I need to make any special changes. Kelly showed a really cool way to use her pattern keeper to mark when you're using a half stitch versus a full stitch and, and all that. And she does a really good job of showing you, but basically when you're putting in your threads, you can click on the side when you're inputting thread colors and you can tell it that you want to make a custom. And the minute you use custom, you can put in any words, symbols, whatever. So you can put in, for example, I put in the number that was going to be the half stitch and then I put a slash, and, and that way I know that that's a half stitch. And I also want to say there's a new floss tuber that I'm just loving. I'm loving what she's doing. And she's called Nifty Stitch. And, well, there's two. There's Nifty Stitch and there's North Island Stitcher. North Island Stitcher is the first one that I've ever seen who is stitching... You can leave your hat on. I thought I was the only one. I've never seen it stitched on Instagram or on a floss tube, so it was really exciting to see that. And finally, before we go, I want to show you something new that I have. So all of you are probably familiar with hoops. I am now using a Nurge hoop or a new Nurge frame, and it's been life-changing. 
So this is a great compromise between a normal hoop, whether that's plastic or, or bamboo, and a Q-snap. And the reason, I don't know, yeah, you can pick that up. See, there's a, I can put my finger in here, there's a groove. And then, I don't know how this is going to work. And then right here, there's, so this is convex and this is concave. And the two go together. And then let me tighten it down and show you. So when you tighten it down, you cannot push these two. You can see I'm trying. I don't have this real tight. But you cannot push these apart because they lock in with that groove. So when I put my piece on here, it doesn't come loose at all. And for me, a Q-stap is just too bulky. I don't like holding that. The other thing, let me see if I can... When I'm stitching, you can see, as opposed to a round hoop, this doesn't cut the corners off. So this is an entire page. Now this is on 18 count. I just stab myself with my needle. And you can see that I can put the entire page and then some in that hoop. Whereas a round hoop, I'm always cutting corners and, I, and then I can hold it this way. And if I hold it this way, I can work like one and a half pages. If I hold it this way, one and a partial page. And that allows me to carry my threads into the next page, whichever direction I want. So that's been life changing and I wanted to share that with you. So that's all I have for you today, but I'm going to be back in a couple of days because I just received today in the mail the Just Cross Stitch 2022 edition of the Christmas ornaments. So I'm going to do a flip through with you while I have all this set up. And then when I have time, maybe Saturday or Sunday, I will upload that and, and take care of that. But I want to say thank you for being here. And I appreciate you. Thank you for coming back. And if you got this far and you're not subscribed, I hope you'll subscribe and come back. Thanks so much. Have a great month. Bye.